So all good things coming for the fourth generation Coyote. I think it's gonna be a really stout engine. It's gonna be able to take a lot of power. But the problem is the fatal flaw of this thing Hey, what's up guys, welcome back. So we are taking the bike over to a buddy's house. He's gonna be working on his car today that help him mod, but we are under 24 hours since the release the revealing from Ford over there in Detroit, up there in Detroit, of the new 2024 S650 Ford Mustang. It's surprising to me because I have a lot of comments. I've got a lot of things that I want to say in this video about how I feel about it. As we get rolling, I got to get everything together. It's going to be an eventful day. But there's some things about this car that, ah, you know, I like and I don't. But there is one thing that is shockingly not being talked about enough. And that is that the 2024 S650 Mustang has a fatal flaw. We're going to discuss in today's video exactly what that is and why you might want to venture away from this car, at least for a little while in this first year run until they get this one thing figured out. Don't need a helmet. I'm in shorts, but we only go in about a tenth of a mile in my neighborhood. Zuka. Your Z4 BMW? Yes, sir. Ba -da 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 -da. Uh oh, okay. So that's going to replace the, and this yep. has got the flashies, the F1 style. Yep, and it flashes uh, on braking. Yep. Nice, dude. Go <laughs> ahead. No, no, no. We start. So the conversation is the 2024 Mustang. Yes. What do you think? Uh, I don't like, now the dark, hor the dark horse one, I'm okay with actually, but the regular ones, I just don't. I didn't like the S the S five fifty when it came out because of um, I just I don't like new things when they come out. Generally speaking, a lot of people don't um, like change. Yeah, I mean overall, Dark Horse looks good. Um, the regular Mustang, it kind of just looks like a Camaro and a Mustang. Had a baby. <laughs> oh, I, mean, I don't want to say that. It's trigger nice everybody that. in the comments. But he says Camaro. Seriously, like, hold on, look, I have a picture. No, Let's, I know, I know, I know what you're saying. Tell me this right here, from right here, this angle right there does not look like a Camaro. No. I mean, maybe some some similar body lines, but I right I there that looks like uh, third or fourth, fourth gen, maybe third gen, third gen Camaro right there. I don't know. The dark horse, the prop thing for that, uh, the pro I would say uh, would be if you look at the tire size. I can't pull it up on this one, but three hundred five in the front. It's a Mach one, yeah. So That's basically, yeah, the, the dark horse is going to replace the Mach one, and it's going to be faster and probably more capable, which is also going to come with a hefty price tag, which is not the discussion of this video actually, because we already know it's going to be like sixty grand plus. But so it's got the Tremec six speed. It also has a ten or eighty option. But the thing is, there is a fatal flaw. There is an Achilles heel fatality for this new s650 mustang what's that what's we're it? gonna discuss a little bit in today's <laughs> video as we keep modding it has to do with the power taking a nap so yeah you are right though i mean like buying a mustang is all about customizing that thing and you know making it your own i don't really know what people are gonna do right i mean throw some wheels on it, suspension and make it a road course car like That's about it. they have like cool like colors and calipers that you can put on the car and like interior bits so you can really customize the new mustang now but what people like to do is more power and if you can't have more power you know then like headers different exhausts and superchargers turbochargers and all that other stuff i mean i don't it's gonna be tough man For, yeah i mean the so dark horse thing, realistically speaking if go ahead right so well yeah so we're discussing uh, the Achilles heel of this thing. Um, it's fatal flaw. I'm going to keep saying that because... <laughs> but there's some cool things about the Dark Horse. I really like it. I like the GT. I thought it was pretty sick. But the Dark Horse really kind of like... I, it's That's what I would venture off and buy. However, comma, it's going to be the first year run. So Coyote's been around for a long time. And what they've done is they beat it up internally a little bit with some GT500. Some Shelby style rods and some other goodies and stuff like that. With twin... 80 millimeter intakes, which is kind of interesting, but uh, yeah, I don't know. It's going to be fun to figure out and uh, tune these things eventually, if that's even possible. Okay. So, the heck were we talking about? Hmm. So, so yeah, so, <laughs> so, so Gen 4 Coyote, yes. from what I have Gen seen, 4, Gen 3, yes. so twin independent throttle bodies, 80 millimeter, right? Looks like it could feed like one bank 
you know, individually each bank can have. We don't know about the oil pump. If it's, if it's going to have like an F-150 style belt or whatever, that would be terrible uh, if that's the case. But I suspect not because what's been going on with the Coyote over the past, you know, umpteen years has been tried, proven, and reliable. And that's a hell of an engine. But the Dark Horse is supposed to be a little bit different internally than I think the regular GT. And uh, it's going to have... What's up? I got to show you. Look. <laughs> Air Charger trying to figure out how to soup. <laughs> <laughs> that's a perfect meme. Well, I don't even know if you can tune these things. The thing is, so we're gonna have uh, uh, beefier rods inside of this new fourth gen Coyote uh, inside of the Dark Horse specifically. They're targeting 500 horsepower. That's awesome. I would probably venture to say when we see real production numbers, it's probably gonna be closer to like 510, 515 horsepower. That would be freaking sick. And the torque is obviously gonna be a little bit higher than what we have now. So all good things coming for the fourth generation Coyote. I think it's gonna be a really stout engine. It's gonna be able to take a lot of power. But the problem is the fatal flaw of this thing. Um, I don't know if we could tune them. I don't know if you could be able to tune them. I mean, I would think that You'd be able to do a clone process. Right, so that's going to be the thing is like the cloning. It's going to be expensive though. Right, so the cloning process, like we take his car, Colton's car, for example, the Supra, being like a 2021 and then like 22s, 23s, they all have the same issue. The, the cool thing with these is you can tune them, but you got to send off the ECUs, like overseas or whatever, and it's an expensive process. Then you got to buy the tuner, the tune itself, and it's like a $4,000 thing. So <clears> with... <throat> Yeah, 5,000. Yeah. yeah, it's expensive, very expensive. But the thing is with this new uh, Mustang, they're gonna be supposedly locked up. Now this is not confirmed yet. Sure, I'm 99.9% .9 sure this thing is going to be locked up from the factory. That's what's all over the internet right now. And that's what a few people are out there discussing and talking about. But the vast majority of the people out there, I think just don't know yet. That doesn't mean that it won't sell. People are still gonna buy these things. They'll still be able to do like cat backs and like some stuff like that, drop in air filters. But as far as aftermarket tuning and mods and superchargers and turbos and stuff like that, I don't know if you're going to be able to do that, at least not for the well, foreseeable future. Of supercharger wise, uh, Whipple, Whipple, you will be able to get a Whipple because Whipple is in with Ford now. That will definitely be an option. However, if you're going Whipple, you're going to get that warranty. You're going to be good to go with Ford. You're going to be covered. But if you want to go E85, you can pretty much forget about it. If you want to pull it down and add a little bit more power, forget about it because they're going to give you a base, your base warranty to covered file tune, mm -hmm. and that's going to be it. So will you be able to get 650, 700 horsepower out of these? Yeah, maybe. But if you want a 2024 Mustang and you want to go sky's the limit to 1,000 horsepower, I think you're going to be screwed. At least unless, unless now, you want to now, spend a now, lot now. of money. The other option could be. Yeah, go ahead. There could be. A piggyback system that you can get, like the C8 guys are running on their twin turbo setups. Or you like the Supra. Or the Supra. Uh, you can get like a MoTeC or something like that. And I'm sure some companies will come out with a piggyback system. So yeah. that way, if you can't get around, if you can't get... But the these are all expensive. They options. are, yes. Especially if Mo for MoTeC. But, you yeah. know, there is options if... You got deep pockets, but... Right. You're going to have an expensive car. So Dark Horse, probably going to be $60,000 plus. That's pretty much a given in today's market. Um, and it, you basically take the Mach 1, existing Mach 1, and up the price from there, I think, because it's going to outperform the Mach 1. Mm -hmm. So they're going to have to, you know, price it accordingly. So then go ahead and save up into your savings account. Mm -hmm. Save up your money into your savings account for the aftermarket. Yeah, whatever aftermarket. Standalone system. Yes, the full standalone. Yeah. And then the clone tough. process, because if, if, a, if a company comes out with clone process and figures it out, yeah, then they're going to be locked in. Of course, they're going to charge a premium because they're going to be probably the only ones that really know how to do it in the first right. place. Kind of just like how the Super is, honestly. There's other people, but it's... Sketchy. Uh, 2024, May 25, until somebody figures this thing out, you may not be able to tune these things right away. So just keep that in mind. You might want to hold on to your S550s for a little while longer. I don't know, but I mean, I'm interested, but for those that want like 500 horsepower and you don't care about tuning, you just want a cool ride, I think you'd be happy. Go ahead. You've got a Camaro here, okay, with their little louver thing. You got a Camaro on your Supra? Okay. Yeah, then you've got <laughs> really M3 competition wheels, BMW wheels, okay. 
Uh, this is like the video I said. You're exactly right, though. You're, the, the point you're getting to is like they had a team of people. Yes. They didn't want to hurt nobody's feelings. They had so, to have. So they're like. Out, and then the dash, okay? The dash is more. The dash is cool, but it's going to be freaking trippy to ride behind. It is. And it because it's like two tablets. Go in like a, a, yes, it reminds me of Mercedes, okay? That's how Mercedes dashes are. Yeah. And so, and it looks like really, to me, it looks like it belongs in an SUV. But, uh oh. But. Whenever it comes out and you see it in person, it might be a little bit different. And then you come over here, and then you still got some Camaro vibes right here, and then you got a little Mustang window. Right, right, right. Normal. And then the back end. The back end's a mess. I feel like it's they murdered the back end. Like it looks, it's terrible. But again, <laughs> on the dark horse version, it looks. It's it, better. It looks better on there, but the regular, you know, your base. No, absolutely not. Yeah, a buddy of mine was, well, I had a bunch of buddies up there, but one specifically was, he's, he's a big Mustang guy, and he was sending me pictures, he's just like, bro, I got my girl up here, and like, we don't approve of this thing whatsoever. They're, they're talking about the dark horse. Mm -hmm. They're like, this thing looks like an SUV interior with Camaro, some exterior bits, yep. and the back end was a hot, was just a mess. Uh, the taillights, I don't like at all. That rear diffuser in the back, I think yep. it's like out of place. I think it's too big, too much, it's like a sea of black plastic mm -hmm. back there. I think it's just too much. Uh, the front end of the Dark Horse, is, I, I kind of like. Mm -hmm. But the side profile, it is Camaro-esque in a way. If, but that's not necessarily a bad thing because I do like the 6 gen Camaros. But there is a lot of stuff, a lot of different things going on with it. And I know that people don't like change, myself included. It's very tough. Need for Speed, the movie Need for Speed. When it showed the S550, the 2015, at the end of the movie, I was like, yes, I loved it. The 18s came out, and I did not until I saw one in person. And I think that this might, this car is going to be, it's very controversial because it's kind of weird interior. It's got some cool things. It's got some weird things. You can, like, rev the engine from your key fob. Mm -hmm. Gimmicky stuff. I don't hate it, but will I ever use it? I don't know. I mean, it's cool, I guess. It's, it's neat that Ford's going, you know what, at the end of the day, though, we still have, with the Camaros going away, and with Dodge wrapping things up, going electric, we still do have a Ford Mustang coming out with an ICE, so internal Speaking combustion of, engine. Listen, yes. the Challenger, did you see that thing? The Charger? No, the Charger, yeah. What about the Charger? Did you see it? The new one? The electric one? Yes. Yeah, it's a piece of it crap. It looks horrible. <laughs> Yeah, and they've got electronic revs out of that thing. It's terrible. It's trash. I don't know why you would buy that. Let me buy an electric car and then rev it up. Yep. <laughs> it so that it'll mimic a, a IC. I, 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 I'm at a loss for words with that car. But, you know, electric is always going to be really powerful. Mm -hmm. But it just, you can't replace, in my opinion, your yeah. rumbles and your vibrations that you get from a real engine. And so good job, Ford, for keeping the dream alive, at least for the next few years. What about Roush? When Roush comes out with their stage three car. Right. So, well, cool. they're in with Whipple. So yeah. if you want a supercharged Mustang 2024, you're going to be able to get it. Roush, uh, Whipple, but you're going to be limited when it comes to tuning. But if you want to go aftermarket and do like pro chargers, Vortex, ESS superchargers, turbos, whatever, you're going to be in trouble, at least for a while, unless you have deep, deep pockets and somebody is able to clone these things and unlock those PCMs. That's yep. going to be, it's Achilles heel. It's fatal flaw. For most people out there, they don't have five, six, eight, ten grand to jump, to throw at a car just to be able to unlock the PCM. And then you got to buy the mods as well. So it's going to be an expensive car going fast mm -hmm. for 2024 and beyond is going to be a very expensive thing. Anyway, I'm going to wrap this up. We're going to get to modding his Supra. He's got a couple of things. I don't want to steal his thunder when he starts making some videos, but that's just my, kind of my initial thoughts on this whole thing as I'm kind of warming up to the car. But let me know in the comments, what do you think? I think it looks cool there's a lot going on with it it's i'm still warming up to some of the stuff that's on it i don't hate the car i am glad that ford is still making a v8 especially with the manual save the manuals right but let me know what you think about this whole thing uh, and as far as tuning and so on and so forth like what's your thoughts your feedback leave it down in the comments i appreciate all of you guys watching let me know again what you think of this mustang i'll see you guys later bye